Chapter 9, Soil and Agriculture. Chapters 9 and 10 will be on your next test. Chapter 9 is about soil and how soil forms and the beginnings of agriculture. Chapter 10 talks about some of the issues surrounding agriculture and um, the pesticide use and a little bit about organic farms and alternative uh, farming. The case study is about a farm in Brazil that uses no-till agriculture. The quotes here are great quotes. This nation that destroys its soil destroys itself by FDR. And then Aldo Leopold wrote a, wrote a quote as well. There are two spiritual dangers in not owning a farm. One is the danger of supposing that breakfast comes from the grocery and the other that heat comes from the furnace. Good thing to keep in mind as we're going through these units, these chapters. Very often I find my students have a hard time with these two chapters because they're suburbia kids. We don't do much farming out here and you're not familiar with some of these issues surrounding farming that a kid maybe in Iowa or Kansas would know about. First of all, you need to know what tilling is. So when our case study talks about tilling or no-till agriculture, a lot of my students don't even know what tilling is. So let's talk about that. Tilling is plowing or turning the soil over to prepare for seeds. And so at the end of a crop, um, you take your crop away, and then the next spring, you till it, and you turn over the old earth, and you uh, prep it, you plow it and prep it for um, the new seeds. But when you do that, you make the soil loose. And so it's vulnerable to wind and water erosion. So in some places, they've stopped tilling the soil. So what happens is that they leave the crop residue behind, it covers the soil, and it keeps soil from blowing away by wind or being washed away by water. And then they put the new seeds kind of in between the crop residue of the old crop from last year and this also protects it from um, from weeds as well and so it's a very promising new technique of protecting our soil no-till agriculture on the next page you need to know a few terms you need to know what rangeland is what cropland is you need to know what soil is soil is not dirt dirt is abiotic non-living. Soil also compose, is not just dirt, but it also has the living things inside the dirt. Fungus, uh, mold, bacteria. You also need to know that there's no more arable land available in the world. Arable means able to be farmed, and so this is a vocab word to know. What this means is that as our human population grows, we can no longer add more land to feed this growing population because everywhere that we can already farm is being farmed. Everywhere that has water available, that has soil that's fertile, is already being farmed. We do have a lot of empty land. For instance, if you drive from LA to Las Vegas, you see a lot of empty land and you might think, well, why can't we farm that? There's not enough water. The water supply is already being taken by other farms and by houses. And then also that soil is very poor. It doesn't have very much nutrients out there in the Mojave Desert. So again, anywhere that is arable, we're already farming it. So the question is, is as our world population grows, how are we going to feed this growing population? So we have to produce more on the land we already farm. Soil is a problem worldwide. You can see from this map up here about soil degradation that in green we have stable soil and in orange we have some sort of concern and then serious concerns are in red and you can see in our Midwest we're losing a lot of topsoil and it's in red here and then sometimes somewhere I'm sorry excuse me in some parts of California Central Valley were concerned as well. The most soil degradation by continent, Europe has the most because they've been farming the longest. 
All right, so soil degradation, the info you need to memorize, it's worse in Europe. In the past 15 years, 50 years, excuse me, grain production has decreased by 13%. The causes are overgrazing. Whoa, I'm sorry. What about that? Deforestation of our land, which can cause soil erosion, and then also cropland agriculture. So these are the main causes of soil degradation worldwide. So if you recall, the word degradation means a decline in quality. Turning the page, we have a couple of pieces of information on this page, 248, which is the section, Agriculture began to appear around the world 10,000 years ago. So, 10,000 years ago, humans switched from hunter-gatherers to agriculture. It became a positive feedback loop because once people started farming, then they had to keep farming because they had more babies. When people were hunter-gatherers, they um, only had limited a number of children because if kids were very small, you had to carry them from place to place as you hunted or gathered. And once you switched to farming, then you didn't have to carry kids around. You could have a lot of kids. You needed a lot of kids to help with the farm. And so those kids now grew. And now they created farms of their own to support themselves and then their new families. And so that ends up being a positive feedback loop. A couple of terms of different types of agriculture. The first time is subsistence agriculture, where a family grows only enough food for survival. The other type is, um, another type is intensive traditional agriculture, which uses some animals, irrigation, fertilizer, and people who do this can sell food for money to pay for clothing and um, schooling for their kids. In the United States, we have industrialized agriculture, which uses chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and fossil fuels. In the United States, most of our farmland plants a monoculture, which is a single crop, acres and acres and acres of a single crop. It's very cost effective to plant a monoculture because you only have to buy one kind of tractor, one kind of fertilizer, one kind of harvester, and you save money that way. There's a lot of problems with monoculture, and we'll talk about those later in this chapter. Another type of agriculture that's not in your book, but it is on the AP test and my test. So there's a star there to remind you that you need to know this even though it's not in your book. Is plantation agriculture. This is where large corporations have big farms for cash crops, and they're in other countries. For example, there's huge plantation um, coffee farms in Colombia and in a lot of Brazil and other South American and Central American countries. So a large corporation from the U.S. will grow a bunch of coffee, acres and hundreds of acres of coffee, and hire the people there to harvest it. The same with bananas in Central and South America. Those are two of the famous types of plantation agriculture. They're in developing countries. They also have many human rights violations and unfair labor practices. So they have dangerous working conditions. They don't pay their workers a living wage. And so again, these are American corporations that basically exploit people in other countries. So we can have cheap coffee here and cheap bananas. And that is considered an environmental injustice and a human rights injustice as well. Down here, there's a picture of hunter-gatherers versus traditional agriculture and then industrial agriculture. So understand this picture, understand the caption that goes along with it. Turning the page to 300, 250, make sure that you understand this caption. Make sure you understand the picture about soil. Soil is not dirt. Soil is made up of dirt and rocks and slugs and cicadas and earthworms and beetle grubs and bacteria and protists and mites and fungi and so bugs and snails. 
It's basically abiotic plus biotic factors that make up soil. Well, how is soil formed? First of all, on page 251, under soil formation is slow and complex, we have some weathering of rocks that turn it into dirt. Physical weathering can be wind, rain, thermal expansion, water freezing. Chemical weathering can be water that, that runs off the rocks and breaks it up. Gases can do that. And then tree roots can break up rocks, and so can lichen. And it turns it into smaller particles. And so that's how you develop dirt or soil from rocks. Know these terms here, parent material, bedrock, weathering, and the different types of weathering. Make sure you know that for your next test. Turning the page to 252, there's a chart here to understand about the five factors that influence soil formation. And also here, I have a little arrow pointing to here weighing the Earth's resources. It can take 500 to 1,000 years to produce one inch of natural topsoil. So is soil a renewable resource? How do you think soil's long renewal time should influence its management? What types of practices encourage the formation of new topsoil? This is why we're concerned about saving topsoil. It's not easy to make. It takes a long time. And so is it renewable? I, th I think it's partially renewable, is my personal opinion. But there is concerns about the renewal of topsoil. Here's a term that's not in your book, but you have to know. It's called humus. Yes, I know we all love to eat hummus from the grocery store. It's that yummy Middle Eastern food um, made out of garbanzo beans and, and uh, tahini and so delicious. But that one's spelled with two M's. This one is spelled with one. It's called hummus. And it is not to eat. It is mature compost. And it's very important for healthy soil because it provides a buffer for proper pH promotes microorganisms that maintain healthy soil, and prevents nutrients from leaching out of the soil through water runoff. It's kind of really the top layer of your soil. And so if you were looking here at the next page, it would be in the A horizon and the O horizon. In these two horizons, you would have hummus. And they are the beginnings of your next topsoil. And so your book doesn't talk about it, but the AP test will definitely mention hummus. All right, you need to know these horizons. The ones you really, really need to know, and the only ones I will test you on are O, A, B, C. I will not test you on E or R. Um, your AP test will only mention O, A, B, and C. So O is your organic layer. It's leaf litter, it's broken twigs, it's dead bugs, it's anything that lies on the surface of the dirt. It can decompose and eventually become A, and A is your topsoil. This is where plants grow. B here is the next sale. It's called subsoil, and there's not a lot of nutrients in B, and so it's lighter in color. And then you have C, horizon, which is a parent material, and it has larger rock particles, and it can turn into soil at a later time. You also need to know on page uh, three, 253, under soil can be characterized by color, texture, structure, and pH, that dark soils have more nutrients. And so out here in Santa Clarita, we have very light soil. We're chaparral. Very, very light soil. Our soil doesn't have very much nutrients. And so you may notice that your parents, if you have a backyard and they want to grow some vegetables or some flowers, they have to amend the soil. Amend, A-M-M-E-N-D, which means they have to add better soil to the chaparral soil because things don't grow in chaparral soil very well. It's light, and it doesn't have a whole lot of nutrients. Page 